This is a, if you have your Bibles to Matthew 18, be happy to say amen. Amen. We're going to ask you to read along with us. We're going to read beginning at verse 21 down through the end of the chapter. So bear with us. Beginning at verse 21, then Peter came, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him and, and I'm sorry, to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, came and told to their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. And delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. Together. So, so likewise, likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, you if ye you from, from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. trespasses. Praise the Lord. We want to pray. Pray with me. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, this is a wonderful day to be alive and in the kingdom. And we pray your special grace and mercy, your divine assistance to each life here today. Father, you have prepared our hearts for your word through the worship, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you do all things well. You are concerned about humanity. You are concerned about the body of Christ. For you love your church and you gave your son that we might live. So we thank you for that kind of grace and compassion. Thank you today, Lord, that those that have a special need for ministry from your spirit today, all of us indeed. So we want, Lord God, to open our hearts that you might bless us and minister to us in a way that we have need of. For only you know what we stand in need of. We thank you. And we trust you because you're faithful. And we honor you and give your name to praise. Take control now of the service and have your way. And relieve the oppressed. Yes, Let them go free now. By your divine power. Hear the cries of the people of God. And break every chain and every yoke, Lord. Destroy the enemy's dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ, and let him flee seven different ways because of your divine love and your mercy towards your people. Thank you, Lord God, for your mighty hand of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing the cry of the oppressed now. And Lord, you've come to bless us and to strengthen us and to heal us and to free us, Lord, from the chains in the name of Jesus, and we give you praise, and we give you glory, for it's in his name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Give to him a hand clap of praise before you're seated. Praise the Lord. Bless you, and you may be seated. God placed on my heart uh, the earlier part of the week 
and uh, he, he loves us so much, and you know, we always seek him to find out what are you going to say. We realize that, uh, of course, we're on TV today, and this message is going out to the audience as far as the, the Hampton Road, Tidewater area, some parts of North Carolina. And I always, in particular, try to ask of the Lord for his wisdom when we're ministering to more people. This is what he said. He said, the pathway to a deeper life. The pathway to a deeper life. As I thought about that, you know, I believe perhaps all of us have this desire to grow closer to God. We read the Bible and we see and hear certain things that God has done. And these things, you know, they stir our hearts, they inspire us to know that God is so good. And uh, sometimes we may feel like we can never get there, we can never see God do certain things in our lives. But God hears our hearts cry. He knows our needs. And there are times that he responds to us in ways that, just to let us know, I hear your cry, I hear your, your, your desire, I, see, I hear your prayers, I see your tears. I want you to know that I, I've made preparations to help. So I pray that today will be such a day. A pathway to a deeper life. If you're like me, uh, you just don't enjoy stagnation. You don't. You know, year after year, if you see yourself just not improving, uh, certain things just keep happening week after week, month after month, year after year. Nothing seems to change. And it gets discouraging when that happens. And um, you pray, and sometimes it looks like uh, you wonder if God is hearing, although God always hears. The Bible teaches us that. And uh, we'll be talking more about the faith life in the midst of this. But just a little intro. Uh, in, in the church world, as far as the world as, and also in the world, there's so many things going on. It doesn't take but a few minutes to look at the news, even if you haven't been current, and to see what's going on in our world and see that it can be a very depressing thing. And sometimes with covid the things that are happening in the West, Midwest, the fires, just thousands upon thousands of acres burning, people fleeing for their lives. They were secure, it seemed, in their home, in their places. And all of a sudden, they're no longer secure. What they had was just burnt down. And now they had to flee for their lives. COVID killing people just unannounced. Loved ones taken, people just crying crying because they didn't expect that. We're in that time when Paul spoke about it in the word of God. And yet in spite of that, men are lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In spite of the things that are going on in our world, in spite of the desperate cries, the borders just being filled from people from Haiti and from uh, the other parts of the world, people crying and fleeing, looking for hope, looking for something. America, America has been called to be the evangelist for many years ago. God so blessed America, but in blessing America, it was more than just to bless America. It's always just like he intended for the children of Israel, for them to be an evangelist to other nations, so other nations could get to know God. In the same way, they placed on our dollar bills and every coin, every currency, in God, we trust. You look at the Constitution and there's something about God. You know, our nation was founded upon the right principles. But sometimes years pass, generations pass, and they forget to pass it on. And so there rises up generations that forget the reason why America became great. There's so many times that it's that way in the lives of people and even the church. Sometimes the church where God blesses churches and they prosper. And sometimes they forget to pass on the one 
that made the church great. And they forget. And they stop doing the spiritual disciplines that God intended. They forget to pray and to call upon God. They, they forget it was Jesus Christ that did all of these things. But I want to encourage you to know that it takes God to bless and prosper anything that is lasting. And so we, uh, I was thinking about all of these things. I was thinking about so many people. There's frustrations in the relationships in the homes. There's, there's brokenness. There's strife. There's pain. There's pain in the physical dimensions of our lives, physical bodies. And people wondering, where is God? Where is God? And if God is so good, then why is he just allowing things to go over and over and long, over and over again? But there is an answer and there is a path to a deeper life in God. There is a path that reassures us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is a path that causes us to understand that he does not change we change, men may change, time change, and all of these things, but God never changed. If he was a God of compassion 2,000 years ago, he has not changed. He is the same God that's rich in mercy. He's the same God that's rich to all who call on his name. He said, call upon me in a day of trouble, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. But there is a path, and as we embark upon the wisdom and the knowledge of what this is all about, that path to a deeper life. We just read in Matthew, the disciples was one of those times of instruction, Jesus giving parables and sharing with them some of the things in parables and, and in his communicating with them, Peter, as he's always been outspoken, paused and said, Lord, he said, how often? shall my brother offend against me and I forgive him. You see, the Jewish ideal was three times a day. And so Peter thought he was being very spiritual by saying, shall, is, shall I forgive him seven times in a day? And Jesus, to, a, to such an amazing amazement, he answered him and says, I don't say three or seven times. You thought you were being very spiritual by saying seven times in a day forgiving them when the Jewish thought was three. But he said, I'm not saying seven times. I'm saying 70 times seven. You and I know that to calculate that that's 490, no one is going to have 490 incidents happen to them in this one day, right? In the same manner. But the idea was this, that we would have a forgiving spirit. That is the nature. And now listen to what he says now. That is the nature of the kingdom. After he spoke in verses 21 to 23, look at what he said, 22. He said, therefore, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king. And he gives this parable telling how the king of this kingdom and the God of our salvation, what he's like. He forgives us at Calvary. He forgave us every conceivable debt. He healed us. He wipes our slate clean. Past, present, and future. The only thing that we have to do in sincerity when we sin, if we sin, is to acknowledge it and repent. And God promises that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's love. That's mercy. That's kindness. And so we have that as God's people that if uh, we sin, if we fall short, and we do fall short, that we have Jesus an advocate, a lawyer. I would like to have a lawyer or a brother in the family. 
He's our elder brother. Isn't that right? And yet he's our lawyer, an advocate that stands before a holy God and pleads our cause. There is another one called the adversary, Satan, comes and accuses us day and night. Think what it would be like if we didn't have an advocate like Jesus. Satan sees a lot and he's a, a, a liar and a deceiver. But he comes before God, according to the word of God, and he accuses the brethren. So here he is accusing God's people every time we fall short, every time we do something wrong. He's there wanting God to do something against us. But Jesus Christ, our advocate, pleads our case, pleads our cause. Father, forgive him. I paid the price. Forgive him again. And that's how God treats us. That's how he treats us. But in terms, he wants us to show mercy to those that offend us. Am I right? See, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's the merciful. And so I was reading through the scriptures here and what and Second Peter had to say. I was reading what he said in Matthew. And um, so... The pathway to a deeper life can be, for many of us, forgiveness. And the Lord said stagnation or one of the signs of stagnation is unforgiveness. I don't want to go in circles. Uh, you know, and I was asking, well, okay, what's an example? Or who's an example of those in the Bible? Because any revelation we get, it ought to be scripturally based. Am I right? And so God said, well, take a look at the children of Israel. He said they wandered. They were stagnated. They kept wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. God gave the answer, but they never paid attention to it. So because they didn't pay attention to it, they wandered around for 40 long years. And a whole generation was destroyed in the wilderness of the fathers. So they were stagnated. Now God intended to take Israel through, and scholars say, I don't know I wasn't there, that this journey through the wilderness was an 11 days journey. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God couldn't bring them through. He was after something in their lives. And how many know that God would not teach you another principle until you get the first one? He's a wonderful teacher, right? And so it's important when we hear God talking to us, whether it's through the word or whether it's when you're in your devotional time or through hearing it somewhere, once you hear and know that this is God, give full heed to it because it's for your life. It's something to make you better. It's something to help you get over a hurdle. It's something to help you in areas where you struggle with. God is life. And life comes from him. All right, so now as... Uh, and that's one of the things he said. That, so there was stagnation. And I looked up stagnation. And naturally, I did know basically what it meant. But still, I always have a habit of trying to look up words. One of the, uh, and uh, it says, standing still, not flowing, dull, sluggish. And it's used of water in a pool. And it says that water in a pool, after it's stagnated for a while, it begins to smell. Can I say to you that when we're stagnated, we're getting on somebody's nerve? I won't say we smell, but I'll say we're getting on somebody's nerve. So God wants us to grow. 
Because when you don't grow, you become a problem to yourself and all around you. So it's the goodness of God. It's the love of Christ to want us to grow. When we grow, we begin to see things differently. When we grow, we begin to act differently. When we grow, we begin to be more loving and more compassionate. When we grow, we begin to experience more of God's grace. Isn't that right? So growth is very important. When we grow, there's more knowledge. There's more understanding. There's more wisdom. When we grow, the, we can, some things we, we would say and do that we, uh, we won't do it anymore because we've grown from that. Isn't that right? And that's, you, you watch the life of a child. When a child is young, they make a lot of mistakes. They do a lot of things here. And the parents are constantly, son, daughter, do this. Why? Because they're trying to help them to grow. So there's a learning process. And the more they grow, the less they do the same things. They learn. There's some consequences of what they do. So they won't keep doing them. Am I right? Because they learn, okay, mom and dad can get me for that because, you know, they told me about so-and-so. So, so after a while, they begin to stop doing that. Say, okay, that's not good. Mama said, son, don't touch that stove, it's hot. And so he looks around, and when mama's not looking, he looks around, and mama makes sure the coast is clear. Mama's not looking, I saw ease over here at the stove. He doesn't know it's hot. He's inquisitive. He wanted to know why mama don't want me to touch the stove. So he goes in to touch the stove. After he sees the coast is clear, he touches, ow! Mama says, boy, what's wrong with you? He ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> because he touched the stove. Isn't that right? So now, mommy doesn't have to tell him that anymore. He will never touch that stove again. Isn't that right? Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. So life is like that. There's it's a constant learning. And so when we come into the kingdom of God, God loves for us to be learning and growing, learning and growing, and learning how this kingdom is about. And so thinking in terms of the kingdom now, he says, the, therefore is the kingdom of heaven like this. In other words, this is a concept and a way the kingdom functions. And, uh, and verse 35 in Matthew 18 says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So forgiveness is not for the other person, but it's for you. Isn't that right? Because we become stagnated if we don't forgive. Sometimes we feel, well, I ain't letting them off the hook, you know, and if they did that, it wasn't right, so I'm not going to. But it's holding us back. It's not holding them back. It's holding us back. Isn't that right? And so when I see it like this, oh, wow, okay, I don't want to be holding myself back, so what I got to do is forgive. God's ways are so perfect and wonderful. So, uh, and I've been there. I've been there so many times. I've been there many times, but it was in the process of God teaching me concepts. King. So there are principles to live by. It's just like laws in the state, United States of America. When a foreigner comes uh, and then he wants to become a citizen and then he wants to operate, then he's got to learn the laws of the land. Am I right? Because if he doesn't learn the laws of the land, let's say he runs through a red light. Oh, man, what happened? I almost got hit. What's wrong with those people? He ran the red light. He didn't understand what red means. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There are laws and principles in the kingdom as well. So he says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Now, I can't change that if I say, okay, I don't, want, I don't feel that's right. But I didn't make that law. God made the law. Isn't that right? So when I follow God, there's blessings for me. And, 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 and God, in one of, the, one of the most divided places on earth is Sunday morning Christians. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is. And we're the ones who know the truth. You can't expect the world to know kingdom principles. They're not saved. But the church is the most segregated place there is. Whites don't want to mingle with blacks. And you could, blacks don't want to mingle with whites because we this and that and the other. But the Lord is not like that. He's not like that. God is good. He's good. And that blood, oh my God, that blood that was shed on Calvary is not for the black. It's not for the white only. It's not for the Latinos. That blood was for every human being. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
It was the blood of his holy son that looked upon hurting humanity, looked beyond the faults of all humanity, the sin of mankind, and he wanted fellowship. And he knew that we could never come back to the Father if he never went and shed his life's blood. We were doomed for something that wasn't made for us. Hell wasn't made for us. But it enlarged itself. Because in the process of the devil and his angels, many people will go that will not hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So hell has enlarged itself. But uh, thank God that, look at somebody say, well, thank God we, I'm not going to hell with the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God has prepared better things for you. You believe God. We believe God together. So back now to this. So the kingdom of God has concepts and principles and laws of faith. Remember what he says. Without faith, it is impossible. It's not possible to please God if faith is not in operation. Isn't that right? I could not come to Jesus Christ. If somewhere I didn't exercise faith in what he says, after I heard the gospel, I came to him and accepted Jesus into my life. I had to apply faith, right? Now, this can sound foolish, and to the world it is foolish. How can somebody save you? How can a man dying on the cross uh, uh, cause you to go to heaven? And it's, it's nonsense to the Greeks, right? But to those that, are, that believe, it's not nonsense, right? We believed and all of a sudden Christ came into our lives and there was a witness in our heart that we belong to God. Why? Only because we exercise faith. So there are principles and concepts and laws of faith in this kingdom for the subjects of this kingdom that we must learn if we're going to uh, uh, succeed and have a prosperous and, and, and a victorious life in God. We must get to know these laws and principles, right? And the Bible says we're strangers and sojourners and pilgrims, right? So we've come into a place and uh, uh, heaven is our home now, but we've got to learn about this new life and this, 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 this uh, destination. We belong to God now. We're strangers down here. So this world is no longer our home. Well, that brings me to another question. If I don't know that, I'll put all my stock in trying to be happy down here because I don't know that I'm a citizen from another country. That's what the Bible says, isn't it right? We may live 70, 80, or 90 years if we're blessed here, but after that, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. We're going to spend eternity with God. And so it's, it's, it's good to get to know a little something about God right now, right? You don't want to get in heaven and feel like, what are these people praying God for? What's wrong with them? Because you didn't exercise it down here, isn't that right? And I know it's not going to happen like that, but I just want you to get the point that I'm making. Because if we get to heaven, we're going to learn to praise, isn't that right? God is good. But God is so good. And, and, and God, I, I hear him, I listen to him to us, and not on this, 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 this church, but to the people of God, just, just encouraging them, praise me, praise me, worship me. And, 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 and one person said, I wonder if God's there on the ego trip. No, he's not. It's for our benefit. It's for our benefit. God is deserving of praise. He is so good that we cannot comprehend how good he really is. He deserves all the praise. And so when we praise him, we're applying wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. So it's for our benefit. And so the Bible says wisdom is the key thing in life, right? So if I learn to praise God, I've learned something very basic and very important to my success. I learned that praise is comely to the upright, and whoever offers praise, they are glorifying God. Come on, let's pause and give a praise, praise break. Hallelujah. That's it, give him praise. He's deserving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible in Psalm 100 says, uh, uh, serve the Lord with gladness. Wow. Serve him with gladness. 
Are you there? Look at your neighbors. Are you there? Serve the Lord with gladness. Don't you go back to your home complaining. You know, serve him with a glad heart. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I tell you, he, it took me a while, but God says, son, when you get up in the morning, when you put your feet down on the floor, lift your hands to me and begin to magnify me. And I had to learn that, saints. It didn't come easy. Sometimes I, I, sometime I didn't want to get out of bed. I said, no, you can't stay there. Put your feet on the floor and lift your hands. And bless the Lord. Can you lift your hands and let's bless him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's deserving of all praise. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, I share this. I, I share this. My father was a good man. He said, uh, I don't like when preachers tell me, try to tell me to praise God. I know how to praise God. But the Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he said, the Lord's name is to be praised. Isn't that right? You look outside, is the sun up? If the sun is up, then you need to praise God. Hallelujah. He said, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the time the sun comes up to the sun, time the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Praise is, praise is what's happening. All right. So, the path to a deeper life. You, you, we want to go deeper in God. You, 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 you don't want the same thing to be happening day after day. You know, just just frustrated with life and frustrated with family, frustrated with with job, frustrated, you know, just not happy, just looking for a way out. When you come to the kingdom of God, that is the way out. That is your way out because you've come from death into life. Hallelujah. And everything that pertains to life and godliness is in him and has been given to us through the knowledge of God and his son. And one of the things that the Lord said to me, he said, excellent wisdom comes through praise. And I find out when I begin to praise God, if I'm in a situation where I need an answer, needs God to do something, I don't complain and I don't say how bad it is. I don't get discouraged, but I lift my hands and I begin to praise and magnify God. I said, God, you said excellent wisdom comes to praise. So I'm praising you. You're deserving of praise. You're not deserving of my complaints. You're deserving of my praise. So I'm going to give you the praise. And the more I begin to praise God, all of a sudden the anointing anointing comes and the Holy Spirit comes and then he begins to speak and gives me insight and gives me wisdom right in the midst of my situation that I couldn't figure out what to do. Praise. Wisdom will come. I'll never, I remember I was saying, God, I just want to minister to people. You know, I said, you, you said everywhere you go, uh, I want to uh, have something to say about it. And everywhere you go, I want uh, you to be a blessing. And so one day I was like, Lord, okay, I'm sitting here, and I want to be a blessing to somebody. So he said, well, praise me. I started praising him, worshiping him, thanking him. A little while, then God started to talk to me. Call this person. Pray with him. Do so and so. Go over here. And as I went, my day was so effective and prosperous. Why? Because wisdom comes through praise. Wisdom is giving God his due. Hallelujah. Not when you feel like it, because he's always worthy. Isn't that right? Practice that, saints. When we begin to practice that and see what God will do. So we're talking again back on the subject of forgiveness. Now, let me, let me share with you a few things here. I want you to please bear with me. I'm not going to be long. Um, what the scripture says. First, look at Ephesians. If you have your Bibles, follow with me so that you know that I'm not just talking off the top of my head. Ephesians chapter 4. The 
This is Paul the Apostle writing to the church Ephesus. He says on verse, okay, if you're there, say amen. Verse 29 in chapter 4, Paul said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that is, that it may minister grace to the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. We talked about being sealed. Then he said, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and do what? And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Isn't that marvelous? Look at what he says in Colossians. Turn to Colossians chapter 3, two books over. First two verses says in chapter 3, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, because you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now look at verse 12 and 13. 12 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a call against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be ye what? Be ye thankful. I'll come back to that. First Peter chapter 3. Flip on over to the book of First Peter. First Peter chapter 3. He says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conduct or conversation of the wives. While they behold, look at your chaste, pure conduct, coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together. This is what I want you to see. And as being heirs together, somebody say together, of the grace of life. And this is the other point I want you to see, that your prayers be not Stagnation can come when there is disharmony between the husband and wife. Stagnation can come because the prayers cannot be answered. Because there's bitterness and unforgiveness and God wants to heal. And so Peter points it out. And, okay, we're almost down to a conclusion here, but I want to turn your attention to Genesis 37. God has given us answers to our concerns so that he might help us. And as we heed these things, that God is going to involve himself in a very special way. Genesis 37. Genesis 37. Genesis 37. All right. The Bible says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpha, 
his father's wives. And Joseph brought to his father their evil report. Now Israel, meaning, meaning Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Now the Bible was not saying this was right. Are you hearing me? He's pointing out his heart. Sometimes you see it in the Bible, you think, okay, this got to be right. No, this is permissible. No, he's showing Jacob's heart. And he says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Now, I want you to see what happens when there is partial treatment. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And could not speak peaceably to him. What are you pointing out? I'm pointing out that sometimes the condition of our hearts will not allow us to speak peaceably to others. Sometimes it's a dead giveaway when there are areas in our hearts that needs to change, when there's unforgiveness or anger in our hearts. We can't speak peaceably to others. And the Bible points it out so that we can see that Joseph's brethren hated him because of their father. And so they speak, spoke ill with him and harsh and perhaps anger because they were angry with him. But thank God, God did something after he exalted Joseph. But I pointed that out so that you can see sometimes some signs of unforgiveness is, is when we uh, uh, can't speak peaceably to others. Sometimes did, uh, uh, unforgiveness is a dead giveaway. If somebody comes in your presence, if you're in a place eating, if you're somewhere, and somebody that you have all against, and they come in there, there's something that just jokes you. You just feel uneasy. You just something goes on. That means there's something down in the heart realm. God wants to heal. You say, "Well, how you know all this?" Oh, I've been there. That's how I know it. And God had to heal me. He said, "Let it go. You have to let it go." You can't carry things. I've seen people carry things to their grave. I've told you the story of people that stood by their bedside. They just wouldn't forgive. Hurt my heart. I couldn't do nothing about it. But we have the power through Christ to forgive. God will get involved. He doesn't leave us to do it alone. He's the one that will help us, but... He needs our, our will. Because if he says, son, I want you to forgive. And I says, I don't want to. There's nothing he can do. And people can be praying for me. And he's praying for me. Until my will says, I choose to forgive. Ain't nothing going to happen. And I can remain stagnated for years. But God it's, I'm persuaded, brethren, of greater things for you. You will forgive because you believe that God will forgive you. Isn't that right? I believe that about you. I believe that about the audience that I'm preaching today. I believe that people that will hear this word will be broken and contrite and will begin to say, Lord, I heard from you. It was beyond the preacher, but I heard your voice talking to me about my heart, about my situation. And I'm choosing today, God, to let it go and let myself live by the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will help you. Hallelujah. He will help because he loves us. He says that's a way the kingdom is operating. So God wants us. He wants to do something in our lives. And I heard earlier there's a shift. And indeed it is a shift coming. And I heard one preacher said that in the earlier days and one of the moves was signs and wonders and, and uh, God moved in such a way. But then there was another man of God that God was dealing with him about his life. And he told him, he said, this last move is going to be about holiness. People are not going to live any kind of way. And so if he's working on you, just know he wants you to be a part of the move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
In times past, God used preachers, their lives were, they were in adultery, they were fornicating, they were doing things that they shouldn't, and they had bad attitudes and bad hearts. But this day is a new day, and God is not permitting it today, because this last move of God is going through, and we, people are going to see the holiness of God flowing through the people of God. Isn't that all right, y'all? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You say, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, God is, yeah, I know he, we, we're not perfect enough. But, you know, you've got to understand how many people that are backslidden and will not come back to God because of church leaders and people in the church offended them and wouldn't change their hearts toward them. When I'm out witnessing the people out there in the parks and areas, I am amazed. So many of them have been in church, but they're no longer in church. And I asked them, well, what's, why are you not in church? What was it? They he hawing around, and then finally they say, well, you know, this sister in the church, this deacon in the church, or this brother in the church. So how can God send the harvest in when we we could offend others? God doesn't want that. When he sends babes in, he don't want them to be hurt. He wants the babes to be embraced. Will you be a part of this last day move from God? Will you allow him to do in you whatever he wants to do? Will you not compare yourself with others? Will you only hear what God has to say about you? Will you be a vessel for God? Will you bow your heads with me? Father, in Jesus' name, there is a path to a deeper life. And that path is to forgive, to let go, I, I know that there are other things that cause a stagnation like fear and speaking wrong words, but one of the paths is forgiveness because that's a characteristic of the kingdom of God. And Lord, you gave example of God, the, the prodigal son and his elder brother. His elder brother was with the father, but he was angry. But Lord, today, through your word, there are people here that want to make the transition. They hear your word and they want to change. And may we submit to them that you will help them. You will not leave them to fight it alone. You will be right there. Because you're a God of mercy and a God of compassion. You said in your word, if we sin, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's the propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. While we're praying, I want you to begin to just ask God, Lord, is there somebody that I need to forgive has my life been stagnated for years because some person hurt me maybe it was my parents or maybe it was my siblings or maybe it was my relatives somebody hurt me or maybe it was my spouse that hurt me and I I wasn't able to let it go I've carried it these many years what about you today there's a clarion call from the Lord and if we allow him he will heal he will do what no one else can do he does not condemn he's reaching out in love saying I want to break you this stagnation from your life I want to I've got use for your life I want to take you higher I want to do more with your life but I need you to let these things go that's bothered you for years. 
Let the preacher go. Let the deacon go. Let the mother of the church go. Let the usher go. Whoever it was. Let him go. Tell God I want to walk the path of a deeper life. I want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may be here and you may need images healed, memories healed of the past where you've been hurt. Traumas came to set you back. You may be here but God says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good and good the gospel to the poor, the meek, to heal broken hearts, set free those that are bruised, and preach the year of release and the year of God's favor. God has that for you and I. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If there's anyone that you, you want to come back to God, See, I heard the message and I really want to come back to God. I wandered far from God, but I want to come back. I want you to know that God has open arms like he did the prodigal son. He wandered and squandered all of his living. And he realized that he was living less than even the hired servants of his father. And when he came to himself, he says, even the servants are living better than I'm living. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father. I'll tell him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. Just make me a hired servant. But to his amazement, God made him more than a hired servant. He says, you're my son. You're my son. And the father stretched out his hands and ran, ran to him. He was so glad. Let us stand on our feet today.